ever wanted to understand guitar or bass electronics but didn't want to have to get a degree, then this series is for you. Hi, my name's Ted Burmis. That was me in the intro, by the way. I'm the owner of Sonic Nuance Electronics. I have both a bachelor's and a master's degree in electronics and over 30 years of circuit design experience. In doing work on musicians' gear, I've shared knowledge with them. Several of these customers have encouraged me to share these discussions as they found them helpful. The goal of this episode and the overall series is to explain electronic concepts to musicians in simple terms so that they can use their gear effectively and focus on what matters, making music. To begin our discussion on humbucking pickups, we're gonna start off with this diagram of a simplified magnetic pickup. It's actually a single coil in this case. If you haven't done so, I highly suggest listening to the first video. Uh, there's a link to it in the description where we talk in depth about how that works. On top of the pickup, we have a string, a metallic string. Below it, we have the body of the guitar so that you are looking at the side of the guitar as if you're wearing it and looking down. For simplicity, let's remove the body and the string from this diagram. Let's also add another single coil pickup on this guitar. While magnetic pickups operate based on converting the physical energy of the string into electrical signals, there's another type of energy not originated from the string that the pickup can respond to, known as electromagnetic interference, or EMI for short. Though you can't see it, the air is filled with EMI from FM radio waves, to cell phone signals, to power supply noise, lighting noise, etc. Some of these signals are picked up by the pickup's coils, which are acting like an inadvertent antenna. EMI's effect on pickups can be addressed in a couple of ways. One of them is to prevent the EMI from entering the pickup in the first place, and that is known as shielding, which we'll discuss in a future video. Please subscribe and I'll let you know as soon as that one's out. Shielding is literally a metal shield around the coils protecting them from interference. The shield blocks the interference and diverts that energy to ground. In fact, one way to test your instrument's shielding is to bring your cell phone close to the pickup. Invariably, there'll be some EMI picked up, but the degree to which it's picked up will tell you how good your shielding is. Let's remove our shields from the diagram and discuss the other way to prevent EMI's effect. And this is done after they enter the pickup coils. This is done with what we'll call humbuckers. They're humbucking pickups. To explain how they work, we have our two single coil pickups here. Seen from the diagram, since we have a copy of this EMI signal in the second pickup, we can subtract it from the other pickup's EMI signal. There are various ways to do the subtraction, but one of the simplest ways is to connect the two pickups in series. To prevent the desired string signal from being subtracted as well, one of the pickups is wound in an opposite direction and has a magnet oriented with opposite polarity. This is often referred to as reverse wound, reverse polarity. This is shown on the diagram with the pickup on the left having an opposite winding direction from the pickup on the right. Note that the pickup on the right has a south-north orientation, whereas the pickup on the left has a north-south orientation. Subtracting an inverted signal from the original subtracting a negative ends up adding the signals together. When combined, the string signal is added in phase while the EMI signals are subtracted. This is why humbuckers are usually twice as big as single coils. There are usually two single coil pickups within them. Depending on the manufacturer, there are ways to do things such as coil tap or select the individual single coils within the pickup. 